we're going to take a little trip back in time and take a look at another old brown bag MRE. This one was sent to me by Steve1989. It's menu number nine, pork chow mein from Sapaco. And this one appears to be in really good shape. I'm kind of hoping that this is going to be edible. I've actually never had the pork chow mein menu before, so if it is edible, that'll be a bonus. But uh, like I said, it looks like it was stored pretty well. The last couple I got from Steve were more or less pretty edible, considering how old they were. And of course, the old brown bags do not have date codes on them, so sometimes they can be pretty hard to date. But this one is actually pretty easy to date. Pork chow mein was introduced in 1993, and it was only around for four years. It was discontinued after 1996. But in 1996, the tan bags were introduced. So that means that this has to be from 1993, 1994, or 1995. And let's go ahead and open it up and find out exactly how old it is. Okay, and of course the brown bags also do not have a peelable seal. They have the little tear notch at the top and you're just supposed to tear it open. But since this is in such a nice shape, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up from the back with a knife. A little sniff test. Smells perfectly fine. It smells absolutely brand new. It just smells like plastic. Sometimes they can kind of take on the smell of where they're stored. If they're in a basement or a barn or something. And this basically just smells like MRE plastic. Oh, and I see something right off the bat that can give us an idea of how old it is and also something that's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to launch it before we even look at the main. This is going to be interesting because this one has the first generation of Flemish ration heater. They were introduced in 1993, and as you can see, this one is from 1993. So it's going to be incredibly interesting to see if this works or not. Zestotherm. And this has the old cardboard heating element. With the uh, iron filings inside of it, some of them coming out. It's actually not too bad as far as leakage. This one was made on the 71st day of 1993. So that would be an indication that the Meal is probably from 1993, first year for pork chow mein, which would be pretty cool. And here we have the pork chow mein with its modest list of ingredients. No nutritional facts. It is an 8-ounce entree. We also have crackers. Nicely vacuum sealed, hopefully still edible. Let's actually go back so we can confirm the date. We do have a date code on the main of the 43rd day of 1993. So this is very early 1993. So we definitely have a 1993 MRE here. I like how everything is all kind of like packaged in here. Oh, we have an early Tabasco sauce too. And look at this, the spoon. It's was one of the first years for the brown spoon. And it's leaving a little impression on everything else in here. And it looks like the could be some kind of leakage, unfortunately. Yeah, everything from here on down is sticky. I guess it's probably the peanut butter. But, as I said, we have crackers. For the crackers, we have peanut butter, which does seem to have a little bit of leakage. Oh yeah, it definitely, definitely does. It's kind of bad here, actually. A little bit of delamination on here. But it's peanut butter. You know, peanut butter does stay good. And this has a date code on it. This was Packaged on January 19th, 1993, 3019. Uh, we'll, we'll give that a try, but it's going to be a little bit iffy. And we also have a beverage base powder. Oh, I can barely see it here, but it's, uh, it's grape. And this is from the 343rd day of 1992. And we have noodles chow mein, also known as chow mein noodles. This should be edible, and this is a cookie bar, chocolate covered. Probably can't read that, but uh, it's a treat. It's something I always enjoyed getting back in the uh, old days of the MREs when I was in the service. And we have accessory pack A, which has coffee instant, cream substitute, sugar, salt, chewing gum, matches, toilet tissue, and hand cleaner. As I said, we have a very early bottle of Tabasco sauce from the 76th day of 1993. We have the brown spoon, as you said, one of the first years for that. And saving the best for last, we have some freeze-dried fruit. This is peaches from the 197th day of 1992. They must have been using up some old stock. So this should be really cool, and it's nicely vacuum-sealed. 
Okay, and here's everything that's in this 1993 menu number 9 pork chow mein. I originally wanted to make kind of a short video and just sort of go through everything really quickly, but this one is actually quite interesting. First off, for a 1993 MRE, it's in really great shape. It would actually be pretty much pristine if it weren't for the peanut butter having a little bit of leakage. But also, historically, this is from a time of a lot of changes in MREs. Not only is it the first year for the pork chow mein, it's also the first year for Flames ration heaters. That in itself is pretty huge. It's also an early example of the brown MRE spoon and the Tabasco sauce bottles. It's not the first year, but it's still a pretty early example. And it's also one of the last years that they had the freeze-dried fruits. They were already starting to introduce thermostabilized fruits at this point, but some of the menus still had freeze-dried fruits, and they were in the process of phasing it out, but it took a couple of years to really see them completely disappear. And why don't we go ahead and take a look at the accessory pack. As I said, this is accessory pack A. As far as accessory packs go, it's kind of a boring one. We have some commercial coffee in here. That yeah, smells perfectly fine too. You have Taster's Choice Coffee, Cream Substitute, Sugar, Domino Sugar, Salt, Old School Wet Nap, Toilet Paper, Matches, and Standard Chewing Gum. So now I guess it's time to try out this first year flameless ration heater, see if that can do anything, and yeah, check everything else out. Alright, so a 1993 first year flameless ration heater. I do have the salt on hand. In case we need it to try and enhance the performance. Let's take a quick look at the pork chow mein. And it has the same 3043 date code as the box. And actually, why don't we, since we're doing something a little historical here, take a look at this old style heating element. And we can compare it to a more modern one. This one's actually from 2009, so this one itself is nine years old, but yeah, uh, it'll do the trick. Um, first, as I mentioned, the bag is a little bit longer, and if I hadn't torn this off, you can kind of see the difference here. I'd say about another inch and a half or so. And I was going to mention that you had to put more water in these, but now I can actually demonstrate that. You can actually see that the uh, fill line has been lowered over the years. Its performance has increased. And let's take a look at this heating element. As a matter of fact, this is actually probably a good idea to be opening this one up because I can have this on standby if this one's a complete dud. Here's the more familiar four compartment heating element that we have today. But they're about the same size. This one is in a basically like a cardboard kind of a sleeve. And the uh, you can actually kind of feel the iron filings in there. They're not really as protected as they are in these newer. I don't know exactly what this uh, sort of woven material is, but it's R and D for you. I'll put the element in here and the entree. And we'll fill it up to the fill lines. Right about there, and right between the lines. Slide everything down. And we have the heating element centered on the entree. And we'll hold the top over so we can ensure that the water is soaking the heating element. And let me give this uh, yeah, at least 30 seconds, maybe about a minute, just to see if anything happens. All right, a couple minutes later, and not terribly surprising, this appears to be almost a complete 100% dud. I can hear just the slightest bit of sound coming off of it, but no heat generated at all. And as I said, it's been a couple of minutes, so uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that. I mean, these things certainly aren't meant to last 35, 36 years, but it's worth a try. And before we completely give up on it, Let's give it some salt and see if maybe that can do the trick. Give that mix into the water. And I'll be right back once again. I'll see if this does anything. 
Okay, it's been a few minutes, and I kind of feel like I'm trying to bring Frankenstein back to life. It's definitely doing something. You can see, because I, I rolled this up and kind of trapped the air in there, it is generating, not necessarily steam, because it's not hot, but it is generating some gases, because it is puffing the bag up. And it is making a little bit of noise. I'm not sure if you can hear this or not. But it is working, it's just not doing very much. So for the sake of trying to heat this up, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this out to the more modern one. But I'll let this uh, continue working and see if it generates some heat. It's getting warm now. And not enough to, to say you're heating up the entree, but there is some heat coming off of it. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I don't wanna spend that much time, but I will let it keep working and see what happens. And in the meantime, we'll try with this nine-year-old FRH. See how that works. And once you know it, I gave up on this a little bit too soon. And we can see this here, but it's generating steam now. And it's very hot, you know what? I can't believe I just did this one. But this one is, is still activating and it seems to be working, but I know that this one has been resurrected from the dead. Once again, I'm going to switch it back. Uh, it has a much worse smell than the newer ones. You can see it kind of, kind of generates this uh, foam in the bottom. But you can hear that, right? This thing is actually working. And even generating steam. So, after all that, we can throw it back into the box and we'll put it at an angle on a rock or something. And see how effectively that heats up our entree. All right, I found that to be very impressive that we're able to activate that heater. And let's hope some of this other stuff in here will also surprise us. Let's check out these crackers. See if we can get a hiss out of this. Yeah, that was not very loud, but there's definitely a hiss. And true test. A very boring, plain cracker smell. Exactly what you want to smell. Unfortunately, they're breaking up a little bit, but they seem to be just fine. Yeah, those just smell like old school crackers. Nothing wrong with that. And the peanut butter, the thing that appeared to be leaking a little bit, a little bit of oil, it's amazing how that stuff can come out of there. It can sort of leach through this over the years because I give this a really good kneading. It was very solid and I didn't have too much hope for it. And now it's almost like a liquid in there. I just really needed the heck out of it. And uh, you can see there was some delamination because of the oil and now there's actually a lot of delamination, uh, which not too hard to believe considering you know, what I just put it through. You can just tear this right off of here. And it's oily underneath, and that's where the oil has been leaching from. But let's see what it's like. A bit hard to open when it's doing that. Yeah. It sure looks like peanut butter. It's surprising how liquidy it is, considering how solid it was before I started kneading it. and it smells like peanut butter, other than a little bit of the uh, packaging that gets in there. Let me see if I can get that out of there. Mm, it doesn't look bad at all. It seems to smell okay. At first I thought it was a little bit of a uh, kind of a musty smell coming off, but it seems to be all right. All right so that seems to be a success. And let's check out the cookie bar, chocolate covered, also known as a trackpad. So vacuum seal, I don't really hear any hiss there. But uh, this was always a favorite of mine. I don't know if it seems kind of boring now, but when I would get an MRE, especially if it was like a kind of a nasty menu, and I saw there was a cookie bar in there, it always made me pretty happy. It's kind of this waxy chocolate coating. Not what you'd call a, a gourmet kind of thing or anything, but it actually does, this chocolate smells pretty good. It smells like uh, Hershey's or something. 
like a Hershey's Kiss. And the uh, chow mein noodles. I'm going to actually put those on top of the, uh, the chow mein, but let's take a quick look at some of them, see how they're doing. I was kind of thinking that it's possible, let's get the uh, oxygen absorber in there, it's possible that the um, oil was coming from these instead of the peanut butter, but I'm pretty sure it's from the peanut butter, just because this package had a lot of the, uh, the residue on it. And here we have the noodles. Those are fine. And we're going to open up the peaches last, just before the entree, because these things tend to start to rehydrate in the air, just you know, once you open them up. So we'll do the beverages first. There's the beverage base powder, which you can barely read, is grape. So I'm guessing we're going to see the old school purple grape as opposed to that new kind of disconcerting blue grape. And we have 12 ounces of water for that. There it is. Purple with that nice, wow. I'm going to say that nice artificial grape smell, but it's got kind of a chemical sort of a smell to it. But it's still in powder form. I'm sure it'll be better once it's in the water. Yeah, there's that grape Kool-Aid smell. You can see it's a lot of powder. It actually raised it from 12 ounces to almost 14 ounces by adding the powder to it. And just switch this out to a smaller glass, like that. And it still leaves us with quite a bit of extra beverage. Let's see how the coffee has held up. It's the taster's choice. 35, almost 36 years old. Doesn't seem very likely that's going to be good, but we will check it out. Hey, you know. Wow, it actually smells just fine. It looks good, too. I don't see any dry mold in there. Wow. Seems totally fresh. That would seem to be a very good indicator of how well this MRE was stored. All right, and that was the second very impressive thing to come out of this MRE so far, along with the famous ration heater that was still working. Some 35, 36-year-old instant coffee that appears to be still good. And now let's see if we can make it a trifecta. We're going to check out these peaches. And that's a smell that takes you right back. Smells about 50% uh, like peaches and 50% like plastic. But that's what it is, it's just peaches, freeze dried. And let's see how that Flemish ration heater did. It's still got some good heat on the bottom. Yeah, and the side that was in contact with the heater is really, really hot. This is, that's very impressive. I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit, a little bit slimy. All right, that certainly isn't the hottest entree I've ever pulled out of a Flemish ration heater, but it's pretty impressive. It's quite warm. And unfortunately, I uh, opened this while well, I thought it was filming and the camera wasn't on. But first look, everything seems to be okay. This is very much a liquid kind of an entree, but... It doesn't smell off. It seems to smell okay. Let's check it out. Well, the camera did it to me again and it wasn't recording when I poured it out, but there it is. Looks pretty good. The stuff on top was at the bottom of the bag and it was the stuff that was the least heated. So you can see as much as it turned into a brown liquid down here, it's still a little bit uh, gelatinous on the top. 
All right, why don't we just sprinkle a few chow mein noodles on here, and we'll try it out. All right, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, this is still very old. You have to be careful with this. It seems to have passed all the tests. Let me just uh, get a quick uh, sniff of this sauce here. Try it out. I don't really see any warning signs. It just tastes like a brown sauce, basically. So let's give this a try. You get some pork in there. You get some water chestnuts. Looks like some celery and some mushroom. I think it's a little bit of everything. Well, it seems to taste okay. It's a little, there's something, and like I said, I've never had this before, so I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to taste like, but there is a little bit of a, kind of a metallic aftertaste. Let's try the pork. Yeah, the pork may be uh, not doing so great. I think you could eat this. I don't think I'm going to eat too much of it just because I don't want to take a chance on getting sick, but um, what I will say is that I was really glad to see on the ingredients that the third ingredient after water and quick pork is water chestnuts. I'm a big fan of water chestnuts. Uh, it also has celery mushrooms. Yeah, that's pretty much it as far as things that you would recognize in here. So let me get this uh, big old water chestnut here before I stop eating this. It's pretty good. I wouldn't quite go as far as to say it's delicious, but it's uh, it's not bad. And I'm sure when it was fresh, it was probably a lot better. The chow mein noodles are kind of a nice touch. Give it that little crunch, just like if you bought some like Lechoy Chinese food. You know, the stuff that swings American. And put those dry noodles on it. It's kind of like a, an MRE way of gun dogging it up. Without having to crumble anything up. And they also, they do seem to be fine. I thought there was a little bit of an aftertaste with these two. But they, uh, they seem to be okay. They don't seem to be stale. Obviously nice and crunchy. And speaking of crunchy, I'm going to try these pears before they do get too old. I'm going to break these in half, and what I'm going to actually do is reconstitute about half of it. I always find it a lot more fun just to eat it dry. Now, there is something going on in my throat. I think I'm definitely done with that entree, but it doesn't taste horrible. Anyway, it's always fun just eating these things dry. And they kind of reconstitute in your mouth just from your saliva. And that's good. It's one of the more fun MRE components to eat and freeze-dried fruit. And let's give this a little bit of reconstitution. Doesn't take much water. You can see you know, instantly it almost right away starts looking like uh, canned peaches. It's like magic. We'll let that do its thing. Let me put a little bit more in there. I'm gonna try out the I'll try out the cracker first. Just to be sure. Yeah, I mean it does seem to be fine. And some of this peanut butter. It just tastes like old school MRE peanut butter. Yep. It's a classic combination. Nothing exciting about it, but when you're eating something like this that's 35 plus years old. It's kind of exciting. But also quite thirst provoking. Let's give this a coffee, a cautious little sip. It tastes like just fine freeze dried instant coffee. And with the cream and sugar in there, nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly preserved. Let's try out these rehydrated peaches. The more water you add, the more syrup you're going to get. Yep, it's got a little bit of a, a slight bit of a crunch in there, but um, eventually it'll completely reconstitute, but it's basically like opening up a can of peaches in syrup. It's good stuff. I'm going to try out the grape beverage base powder drink. It's got that artificial grape flavor. It tastes basically just like a Kool-Aid, like here. I'm a kid's drink. And that leaves us with our Cookie bar, chocolate covered. Looking forward to this. Classic. As long as it's okay and I don't see any reason to think it won't be.
Yep, it's got the uh, the cookie in it. It's got a nice little crunch. It's kind of like a cross between like a graham cracker kind of cookie and like an oatmeal cookie. But it seems to be perfectly fine. The uh, chocolate coating, like I said, a little bit waxy, but it tastes like chocolate. Nothing wrong with it. And I'm guessing that having that sort of waxy kind of a chocolate covering probably helps preserve the cookie too. And the reason not to dip your chocolate in my peanut butter. And that's going to be good too. You can already tell. Yeah, that's really good. That's worth the price of admission right there. I'll tell you, just to be safe, I'm not going to have any more of the entree. Not a lot of warning bells going off, but just slightly off. It's not like I'm starving or anything. I don't really need to do that. So definitely going to finish the cookie. I'm going to finish the freeze-dried fruit, because how often do you get to have freeze-dried fruit? And that'll probably have some more of the uh, peanut butter crackers. But overall, there's really not too much to complain about with this one. Everything held up pretty well. Like I said, I think if you had to, you could eat that entree. I just don't really feel like I have to do that. I said not to even use the Tabasco sauce. We know what that does. And actually, this one is actually in perfect shape, too. And a lot of times, they start to solidify in the neck of the uh, bottle. And this one is completely liquid, and it looks just fine. So I'm going to hold on to that one. Let me try one of the little gum pieces. See if that's preserved as well as everything else. Yeah, that does that weird thing that these old ones do. It's really hard when you first bite into it. It feels like one solid mass as opposed to the candy shell over the softer gum. And it instantly kind of breaks up and almost turns into a powder in your mouth. You think it's no good, and then it just kind of reconstitutes itself back into gum. And it's fine. So that was a look at a very well-preserved MRE. It's menu number 9, pork chow mein, from 1993. I'm going to say thank you to Steve1989 for sending this along to me. And thank you for watching.